I wanted to show you how the new Canvas interface in ChatGPT affects if you're using uh, ChatGPT to help you write code or to write code. Um, this new interface is beta, and so it's only available in the paid version. The way you get it is you go up in the upper uh, left-hand corner of ChatGPT where all the models are, and make sure you pick ChatGPT 4.0 with Canvas, and you can see it says beta next to it. The uh, O1 preview does not have this interface yet. Uh, so you have to go back to chat GPT 4.0 to use this. Uh, the chat 01 model is actually a better model for programming because it thinks a little bit longer. Uh, <clears throat> so hopefully they'll get the out of beta before too long in and get the full version of 01 with this interface because this interface is great. So anyway, so you need to make sure chat GTP 4.0 with canvas is up at the top to left. Interface looks the same right now until we actually put something into it, and you'll see what happens. So I'm going to just do a simple program to show you some of the features of this that you can use with programming. The features are different if you're just writing documents, uh, uh, but this video is kind of focused on the programming aspect. So we're going to go with uh, write a tic-tac-toe program. All right, so on the left... The left pane here that comes up is the normal chat GPT window. This other window to the right now is what's called the canvas window, or, or I presume that's what it's called, and it gives you extra editing options. So over here you can still use the left hand side to uh, kind of overall do things, but in the right side you can do specific things to specific uh, areas. And, and so uh, we can go in here and if we go over to the bottom right here, we can have it actually review the code and we can run the code or we can actually tell it over in the left side ask how to run this and it will give us specifics if you don't know how to run a particular program or you need to know what libraries to download uh, but if we go over here and we can of course review the code ourselves and tell it to change something or we can run it and say hey i got this this error can you fix that and it will go through the code we can actually go review code and it will look for problems in the code and suggest how to fix those problems and you see these little windows come up over the to the right right here and so uh in this case what we're going to do is we can either apply or we can just click x depending on what we want i'm going to just apply them all now i can only do one at a time so we'll fix what it said it will run through it and then it will pop back up the windows again and we can apply the next all right so i went through all those and told it to apply all of them uh, you can only do one at a time because it has to run through and do one suggestion before it does the next but it's updated um, the code here for us. Uh, the other thing that we can do down here, some of the other functionality uh, that we have is we have, uh, we can port it to another language if we want. So if we click on this, there's a little slider here. We can keep current, we can change it to Python. It's already in Python. We can make it C++, we can make it PHP, we can make it JavaScript, Java TypeScript. So let's change it to JavaScript. So that's pretty cool We can uh, that we can uh, switch it to do an entire different uh, scripting language. Uh, let's go back to Java. Let's go back to uh, Python. You really want to get it. The first thing you probably want to do is get it into the language you want. By default, it always goes to Python and ChatGPT. So if you want another programming language, you can specify it at the time you write it. But if you decide later you want to change it, use that, that function to change or port it to a different language. All right. So we can also fix bugs. Uh, so we reviewed code and it gave us some suggestions of, of you know, what we could do to improve it. But let's fix bugs and it will look for actual problems in it. We can also, there's a thing here to add logs. And what add logs does is, well, it will actually tell you over here in the left when it gets it done. It's going to add some print statements. And, and so it says it, it, it added print statements throughout the code to help trace its execution um, uh and uh, to find bugs in it so really that you would only use if you were having problems with bugs and it's just like when you program regularly you can put a print statement in it in certain points um of the uh of the code to see what's happening and such so if we go back up to the upper right we have previous version basically undo and we can click on that and it goes back and takes those print statements out we can go next version because you're going to want you're not going to want those print statements probably in the final program because they're, they're mainly intended for debugging so we're going to restore this version and go back. And if we go down here, so we have fix bugs, add logs. And the final one is add comments. This one is really good, particularly if you're um, if you're working with somebody else and giving them code, because it will go through and it will explain everything in the code. It kind of needens everything up and it puts these comments in. And uh, 
explains what's going on uh, in each section of the program for you. So, you, so you, if you have to go back to the code later, or if you want to alter the code manually, you'll be able to do that. Finally, the last thing on this um, is you can in, you can go uh, you can ask it how you run the code, and it will and it will tell you where to save it, how to save it, to load Python, and and whatever else you need. And so, if you're doing if you're converted over to a different language that you're not used to, it will even tell you if it, you need to download particular libraries uh, for the code to work and what you need to do. If you're doing something like a phone app, uh, it will tell you even how to compile the phone app. Like if you're doing for something for iPhone, it will say, oh, you need to download Xcode and, and download the emulator. Uh, and in some circumstances with, with uh, like the iPhone, if you, you're making an app that uses the camera, for example, you can't use the emulator because you need to access the uh, the uh, camera on, on on the iPhone because the app needs to access it because it uses it. So it will tell you things like that. So it will tell you specifics about how, what you need to run the program and test the program. And you can ask it anything about the program. You can ask it to explain parts of it or the whole thing, how it works. And it will do that as well. So that's how the new um, interface currently works, the Canvas interface, when you're using it for programming. Uh, this is the beta version. So they'll probably add some features and uh, fix probably a few things in it, uh, I'm sure, to make it even better. But it works pretty well right now. Uh, the one thing uh, that I would say about it is when you, I would like to see it run the 01 version of the model because that thinks a lot more and it does, it automatically kind of explains each section and it explains to you what you need, need to do to run the program as well automatically, although, although that's not as necessary uh, if you're already used to programming. If you're using this and you don't program often or not at all, it's really useful to have it tell you how you can run the program to give you a head start. Or if you're programming something in a language on a, a, a device you're not used to programming for, it can actually help you learn how to do that as well.